All right, so in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about how to fight inconsistencies with Facebook ads. Inconsistencies are one of the biggest problems you're going to be faced with when you run Facebook ads at scale, especially when you just have one product, right? Because all your eggs are kind of in one basket. And so if it stops doing well, um, you know, your, your sales will really drop. And so fighting inconsistencies is one of the biggest parts of this strategy. And, you know, I'm going to be actually explaining the main reasons why we, we get these inconsistencies with Facebook ads. And then I'm going to be talking about how you can solve them. And then lastly, I'm actually going to be taking you through the ads manager for Flex Posture month by month to show you when inconsistencies popped up and then what I did to, to fix them. So what are the main reasons for inconsistencies? Well, there's two main reasons. Number one is ad fatigue. And so this is when you've been scaling an ad for a little while and, you know, it was performing great at the start, but now it just isn't performing as well. Facebook doesn't doesn't like it as much anymore. Um, people have already seen it and they're kind of becoming immune to it. That's what ad fatigue is. And this happens all the time. Usually after one to two months of an ad, you know, scaling, um, it, it, it'll stop performing as well. Then you'll need to start creating new ads. Now, the second reason is audience fatigue. And this happens especially with, you know, lookalike audiences and smaller audiences that you're, you're scaling heavily to. Um, you know, once you start scaling too much, pretty much everyone in that audience has seen the ad or Facebook just doesn't, this, Facebook just decides that your, your ad isn't the best match for that audience and then it stops showing it as much. And so those are the two main reasons, ad and audience fatigue. And so how do you fight those? Well, fighting ad fatigue, first of all, the way to fight ad fatigue is to create new ads. It's pretty straightforward, but it's true. So, you know, you need to consistently test new ads. And I know I've said this multiple times in other lessons already, but this is true. It's key. You want to create new ads consistently and, you know, you can test them with the PPE campaign. That's what I did. And I'll show you that in a second. But um, basically the same thing that I did with the launch, just a worldwide PPE campaign. And then, um, you know, I run it at like $10 a day and that'll get me some data so I can see if this ad, you know, is getting a low cost per engagement relative to the other ads that I'm already working with. And, you know, I can get a comparison that way and I get the added bonus of social proof. This is, so this is a really easy way to introduce new creatives at the start. Just test them with a PP campaign. And then if the results look good, you can introduce them in other campaigns. Now, finding a new ad that works on cold traffic is obviously the goal here. So when you create a lot of new variations of your ads, uh, most of them will work really well for retargeting and that's what I like doing. So that's why my retargeting audiences have a lot of ads in them. Usually when I test new creatives, I'll also put them in, um, you know, if, if the PP campaign shows decent results, I'll duplicate that creative into my retargeting ad sets and that'll usually do well. But the key is finding something that works on cold traffic. So you slight variations can really be enough, especially for ad fatigue. So sometimes, you know, all you need to fight ad fatigue is change the scroll stopper. And in the case of Flex Posture, that's all it took. And that's all I focused on is changing the scroll stopper. And that was enough to fight ad fatigue. Now, how do you fight audience fatigue? Well, to fight audience fatigue, you need to test new audiences. So this is all pretty common sense, right? But this is, this is really important. So once your audiences stop performing as well, you need to find new audiences. And so... You can do this by testing new interests, by testing new broad demographics. And that's that's what I did for Flex Posture. I started testing new broad demographics and really broad interests, and that gave me a lot of new audiences. And I'm gonna be showing you that once again in a few sec in a few minutes. Now, you know, you wanna test you can also test new lookalike audiences. So this is this is a little trick that not that many people know about, but if you change the time frame of the source custom audience, the data is gonna be really different. And so you're going to have kind of a totally different lookalike audience. And so, for example, if you've been, if, um, for example, your add to cart lookalikes have been doing really well and you have an add to cart in the last 30 days lookalike audience, well, what you could do is you could also test add to cart in the last 180 days. And so you'd have more data. And so the lookalike audience that it generates would be different. And you could also test add to cart in the last seven days if you have enough in the last seven days. And so by changing the time frame of the source custom audience, you can get a different lookalike audience and you know you can test those and that'll give you a new audience to scale to if you can find one that's profitable. And so I did that a lot with Flex Posture as well. I tested different time frame of lookalike audiences. Now, the last thing you can do to fight audience fatigue is to test different combinations of audience plus creative. Now, this one is absolutely key. And this is what I did a lot for Flex Posture as well, is you know, as my, as my lookalike audience campaign started dying out, what I would do is I would just create a new lookalike audience campaign um, you know, for the best countries that I identified. And I would look at, you know, I would take the, the, best, audience, the best lookalike audiences 
that I had from my from my previous campaign. So if I notice that like add to cart buyers and um, you know add to cart buyers and 95% video viewers, if I, if I saw that those were the best performing lookalike audiences, I would create a new campaign with those lookalike audiences, but then I would try a lot of different audience and creative combinations. So I would test, you know, three, um, you know, three to five creatives in each ad set. And so basically that allows me to find new audience plus creative matches. And so that, that helps fight ad fatigue and audience fatigue all at once. And so now I just want to take you inside my ads manager to show you some concrete examples because you know, I understand that was a bit confusing. So right now, this date range is July 1st to 31st. So realistically, this is the same thing as the 21st to the 31st. And so this was the first month. And as you can see, um, everything was smooth, smooth sailing at this month. Um, this was just one ad that I was working on. I mean, I, I think I was starting to test um, a few more creatives already at this point, And I was already planning on making my new, my new creatives. I was sending content. I was sending the product to people on Fiverr to get content made. But everything was going really well this month. Now let's see what happened the next month. So this was only for like two weeks. And so during these two weeks, there probably wasn't that much ad or audience fatigue. It wasn't enough time for that to happen. And so let's see what happened in August. So as you can see in August, um, everything, it, it, it actually did even better, right? And so um, 2.04 return on ad spend and then no, no problem. Everything was smooth sailing. Now let's go to September. Now, as you can see, September, things kind of started declining. Um, so probably near the end of September is when the, the return on ad spend started dipping. And so at this point, this is when I knew that I really needed to start testing new audiences and testing new, um, new creatives. And so you can see that here I started testing interests. Um, so, you know, I was testing different interests, um, all these different kinds of interests, and it really wasn't working that well. Now... Um, let's see what else I was doing. So I was also creating a bunch of different lookalike audience campaigns for my best country. So this is what I was saying here about um, trying different combinations of audience plus creative. So I was creating new lookalike audience campaigns for individual countries. And then I was testing different creatives. And so also that didn't work that well, but sometimes it did, you know, like this one right here, um, the UK lookalikes. Um, this one seems like it was doing pretty well. And so I was just testing these different these different audience matches, and I was doing the same thing, um, you know, the same thing to scale them. I was either duplicating to higher budgets, and or like you know scaling by grouping audiences, and that's what I was doing. But I was really just trying to find new audiences to target and test new ads. And so to show you that I was testing new ads, let's see um, the PP campaign here, um, PPE right here. So this was a PP campaign and um, let's see what I was spending on. So, you know, I was testing, I was testing all these new ads. So I tested, I tested three new ads that month. Now let's go to the next month and see what happened. So if I sort by amount spent again, so if we go to October, so you can see that October I recovered again. So how did I recover again? Well, I probably, so actually I know exactly what happened. So what happened is I found that new ad that I was telling you about. So if I go to Facebook slash Flex Posture, um, I found this. I found a new ad that was extremely profitable, which is this um, this one right here. So I found this new ad, you know, by testing a lot of different combinations. This was just one of the same, you know, this was just a different scroll stopper that I tested, and so you know this this made all the difference. And I found this new ad, and so with this new ad, I was able to start scaling to extremely broad demographics. So I took a new ad and I started scaling to new audiences. And so I fought, that's how I, that's how I was really fighting inconsistencies, right? I was fighting ad fatigue and audience fatigue by testing new creatives and then finding new audiences to scale with. And so, um, you know, what I spent the majority of my budget on that month is this, um, this campaign here where I was testing really, really broad audiences, you know, just um, literally targeting everyone, just e-packet countries, 18 to 55, 340 million potential reach, right? And so that's how, you know, that's how I was able to fight this audience fatigue and this creative fatigue. Now let's see what happened in November. So November, it started dropping again. And so at this point, I probably, you know, I started to test more things once again. So I was testing, um, this was actually um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday month. So you know, I was, I was doing a lot of retargeting that month. And that's another way that you can, you know, um, 
stay consistent, right? Is if your cold traffic isn't working well, well, then you should really focus on taking advantage of the audiences that you already have. And so I had a bunch of different retargeting campaigns and I was testing a lot of different setups for retargeting with a lot of different ads. Um, you know, I ran a lot of big promotions for, um, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, and really that's, that's, that's how I was fighting these inconsistencies. I was always just testing new things, testing new audiences and, and really just trying my best to avoid ad and audience fatigue. And so that's really the only way that you can fight ad inconsistencies with Facebook is test relentlessly and find new audiences and find new ads to scale out to. And so that's it for this lesson, guys. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one.